amigo Chan. Welcome to Meow's PNG Tuber Introduction. A journey to victory has begun. Death to the MPLA! Scorched Earth. Literally exactly what it sounds like. It's a giant desert that wants nothing but your pain and misery. And boy howdy did I find that. <laughs> The moment you wake up on this arc, you are already overheating. But that's not all, because you're surrounded by enemies who also want nothing but your pain and misery. There is a nice part to all this though, and that is, there is only one boss that I have to beat to ascend. So with that in mind, I'm only giving myself 50 days to complete this one, and we'll see how it goes. Also, if you haven't watched my previous video, I highly recommend doing so. It did so well the last time, and I'm absolutely floored by the success, so if you could do that again, that would be amazing. So yeah, just grab your snacks, hit that like button, settle in, and join me in my suffering in the desert. I ain't going with no cheat code character. I'm going in with iron balls. I'm gonna go in and I'm not gonna die within the first seven days because I am unbeatable. I'm the ultimate survivor. Also, look at this specimen. You think he's gonna die? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so if you can't tell by the pleasant view, I was stuck in a cactus from the very beginning, so we were off to an amazing start. While I removed myself from the cactus, I plotted my genius plan to make it to a water source. Just straight gun it. To be completely honest, that plan worked out a lot better than I thought. The only catch was that there was an unfortunate amount of hostile creatures. Yes. Yes, no. No. Not raptors, are you kidding me? This is the way. Oh no. Oh please, no. You gotta be joking. No. I don't know where that terror bird went. Oh, there's just death every everywhere. There's death everywhere. Oh no. Oh, you're joking. Level 12? Bruh. Why do there have to be raptors right there? Are you kidding me? Uh, no, no, no. I can figure this out. Figure this out. Oh, come on. Looks like those raptors are dead. After I got that first precious drink of water, I worked up to get my starter base going. When I was done with that, I screwed around with this boomerang, and let me tell you, it was pretty cool. When I was done with my boomerang shenanigans, I went after this pack of raptors, but then a heat wave started, so I had to hurry back to my house, and I spent the whole rest of the day waiting that stupid thing out. Day two, I was down horrendous for a raptor, but for whatever reason, I was just having the worst of luck on my first attempt. Not to mention some other outside things that definitely made this whole ordeal a lot more interesting for me. I didn't really have anything super valuable on me, so I just went after these dead creatures in the water for some easy hide and meat. But nothing is ever really that easy in this game, is it? Shoot. Shoot. Oh, I'm dead. Okay, but my depression aside, I finally had an animal once to tame this moss shops, and with the berries he collected, I was able to make more narcotic and trank arrows. And with those trank arrows, I could finally tame some raptors. Ah. 
Now that I finally had some protection, I headed off to find a new base location that was a lot closer to more resources. Finally decided to settle on this little canyon area since literally all I had to do for safety was to wall off two sides of my base and call it good. Before I did anything though, I knocked out the resident Caprizucus so I could tame it on up and while I waited for that, I set up a tent and then just sort of sat around until it had finished taming I guess. I began constructing my foundation for my soon-to-be humble abode for the rest of the afternoon and into the night. The next morning I found this high-level tech raptor and tamed it, even though I kind of forgot to record that. On my way back home, I found this Dodicarus looking around and tamed him, then tamed this Jerboa, which I learned you can put hats on them, which is the absolute best thing ever. Oh, oh he's a gentleman. You can't see it very well in that shot, but oh my gosh, it's cute. After that, I just gathered a bunch of resources, but then found this Morellatops near my base and wanted him, obviously, but boy, he gave up a fight. That, or I'm just really incompetent. But no matter, his fate ended up just like the rest of them. Oh, finally. After that, I just worked on my base some more. I got the ball rolling on day four with my first refining forge and got just enough metal to get myself some tools before heading out to grab even more resources to continue building up my base. But I got bored of that after a while, so I went to the nearby mountain to look around for some crystal. And I know, I know, it sounds crazy, but I found some crystal. Then I got myself some sulfur, even though I have absolutely no clue what it's used for. Then I returned home before night fell because I was tired and, oh yeah, I can't sleep, it's arc. I, I just want some sleep, man. Is that too much to ask? Day five, I just went exploring because the only map I played on this game is the island and I really wanted to see all the cool things this thing had in store for me. Which probably for me was just death, but let's talk about something else. Yeah, I, I don't know who the choreographer was, but I'm all for it. So anyways, later that afternoon, I came across this dire wolf who thought I looked like a juicy morsel, but um, I saw good potential for him to be a good boy. And so, yeah, I made him a good boy. The next morning, I made my way home on top of my new friend. And when I got there, I worked a little bit on my foundation before heading out in the other direction to explore my dire wolf. And this time, I actually ended up finding these ruins really close to my house. What? Cool. Can I go in? I can't. There was literally a cave in that building. How freaking cool is that? The cave at first was pretty empty. There weren't a lot of enemies in there, and honestly, I'm not sure why. It might have been a spawning thing. But either way, I didn't have a lot of difficulty getting into it. It didn't take me long to find this massive inner cavern with death drops that I had to cross in order to progress. Yeah, I still hate caves. Oh. I had no idea it was right here. Run! Day 7 was spent further developing my base because I had this nasty habit of procrastinating on it, so it was day 7 I still hadn't gotten anything done. Then I got bored and wanted to go tame an Argy, so I went off to the mountains where I got into a fight with these terror birds. Which is important because their dead bodies attracted this level 52 Argy. So I shot him in the face so he'd be my friend. 
You might be asking why I didn't build an actual trap for him. Uh, it's not because I'm badass, it's because I, I was really lazy and didn't want to. Now that I finally had a flying mount, I went to go explore some of the harder to reach areas of the map. And while I was doing that, I actually located where that wyvern canyon is. Oh, what is that? Is that the- that's the wyvern trench. Oh, I really shouldn't, but I'm gonna do it anyway. While I was flying home though, I got caught in the middle of a sandstorm, so I quickly built myself up this makeshift thatch hut and had to wait the whole thing out. I'm just gonna walk away until this is over. And I actually did leave, cause you know what, I was hungry, I needed dinner, I- I need- I- I- sustenance was key for this recording, um, yeah, what are you gonna do about it? All of day nine was spent working on my base, so, uh, enjoy this little building montage, I guess. I'm gonna be brutally honest, most of day 10 was spent just organizing my loot. Although I will note that later I did go out on my Morella tops to grab some silica pearls, but uh, funny story, uh, there were silica pearls right next to my house, but uh, we're just gonna pretend like there weren't, so I seem smart. Understood? Cool, cool, thank you. Hey dad, how's the riding going? Dad. Hello, Coraline and Coraline doll. <laughs> While I was out and about, I also decided to increase my Jerboa army. And towards the end of the day, I crafted my first set of desert cloth armor. Day 11, I added another victim to my Jerboa army and continued to push my home towards the finish line so I'd actually have a roof over my head. While I was out getting some more resources, I decided to start taming this Ankylosaurus. A heat wave started when I went back home to wait for him to tame, so I went looking for a phoenix just because. I did not find a phoenix, but I decided to pay that wyvern canyon a visit since I was in that neck of the woods and chose to do something very stupid and very risky. Oh boy, I really don't want to regret this. I really, really, really don't want to regret this. Oh no, no. It was absolute chaos and aerial warfare after that since every wyvern in the vicinity came after my juicy dump truck and I quickly realized on my RG I could outmaneuver them and hit them a lot faster than they could hit me. Besides, I was able to avoid their breath which gave me another advantage and I finished them all off in a very surprising amount of time. I did it. <laughs> Look at those levels. Oh dear. Come here. My turn to go on the offensive. Wait, no! Oh hey, that's pretty close. No, I don't want to talk about it. Then literally five minutes after I got home, I got hit by a sandstorm. Like, like, bruh, come on, really? Are are you for real right now? I'm fine. <laughs> this is fine. I'm just trying to game, man. You know, I, I'm just trying to game, bro. 
I also still needed an RG because I lost my other one and uh, so so I went out to get it using the same method. I then built a cool irrigation system to my house and gave my RG some levels to finish the day. When I looked at my notes for day 13, I expected to see something extravagant or at least interesting to mention. Well, no. No, it was just leveled and explored on my RG. Like, whoa, Chufi, calm down, bro, calm down. That's way too much for the viewers to take in all at once. Come on, bro. I was feeling very confident in the early hours of day 14, so I went after this alpha wyvern because I knew I could tussle with him and I needed his milk as well, because th the milk was for the babies. Anyway, I killed him without too much trouble, but it was nice to see that one of my big plans finally worked out. Oh, that's a lot of milk. I returned home as the sun rose that morning and placed a preserving bin so I could preserve my milk. Th that sounded weird. Then I placed a bunch of standing torches in a semicircle and dropped my poison wyvern egg into the center of them so I could finally birth my firstborn child. I worked on my house while I waited for him to hatch and placed a fabricator. And when he finally hatched, well, I don't know. Then I went out on my RG to find an oil vein so I could place this oil rig that I found in a supply drop. Day 15, I continued to raise the baby wyverns I had collected after beating that alpha. Then I placed some more refining forges and started producing gasoline, which I would later use in my generator so I could finally get my electrics going. Then, for the first time ever, I took flight on my wyvern. On the morning of the 16th rotation of the Earth, I made this refrigerator, then used my S plus mod to organize a bunch of my stuff. Then I had some lunch and watched some soccer highlights because I was bored. After that, I paid a visit to the Wyvern Canyon again, although this time with Spike to look for some eggs, and well, none of them were actually that good, so I just ended up screwing around on Spike for the rest of the day to get him some levels. <laughs> and then I, uh, I did a thing. <clears throat> I meant to do that. I then went searching for Spike and the rest of my stuff for a good portion of the night, but couldn't find anything. I did find this red drop in the desert, which gave me a good sniper rifle, but since I couldn't find anything else, I decided to live with the consequences of my actions. No, I didn't give up. <laughs> I, I No, of course I didn't give up. I gave up. Most of the next day was spent leveling up my other poison wyvern, then I paid another visit to that wyvern canyon, so hopefully this time I could get some good eggs. And fortune favored me since I actually found this level 64 fire drake egg. That one's pretty good, not gonna lie. Then I almost died of heat stroke, so I had to hurry over to this hut I crafted out of adobe materials I found in a drop, and it was a very close call. <laughs> go in, go in. <laughs> Oh no, that was too close. After recovering from that little ordeal, I went after this alpha wyvern and killed it for its milk, then I called it a day. I installed some lights on the morning of day 18, and I gotta say, that was one of my better decisions in this playthrough. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's so nice. After that, I put up some windmills so that in the event that I ran out of gasoline in my generator, I'd still have these babies generating me some power. But my supply of metal was short after all that crafting, and I needed more for guns and ammo, so I went out on my Ankylosaurus for a nice old metal run. When I got home, I checked on the progress of my egg hatching and spent most of the rest of the day organizing my stuff and creating some more storage. At one point, I noticed this kangaroo that was stuck between a rock and my house, so I decided to knock him out, but then, uh... I didn't know at the time that they like rare flowers instead of berries to tame, so I didn't get the kangaroo. 
Day 19 was really uneventful. I just messed around with skins for the first quarter of the day before remembering I have a responsibility to care for the children. I finally kicked my rear in gear in the afternoon when I started the foundation for my wall. And insert a corny Donald Trump joke here because I'm out of ideas. Day 20 I set off on my dire wolf to look for the other artifact caves, and I only knew their general locations because of the wiki, but I didn't actually know where the entrances were, and finding them was just part of the fun. And when I say fun, I mean excruciating pain and sadness. Eventually I came across this giant ruin and you literally could not make it more obvious that there was something here, but I couldn't fit my dire wolf through the entrance. Fortunately, I could fit him through the top of the canyon. The risk was worth it. The entrance to the cave was pretty easy to find as well since it stood out from the rest of the environment. And this place also had drops galore. Oh, I'm dead. I'm so- In the end, I reached the artifact completely intact and on my way out of the cave I was still completely unopposed. I wanted to visit the last cave too, but it was really far away, so I headed to the Red Obelisk to craft as many cryopods as I could, and then headed north to find the Grave of Tyrants, which was just the name of the cave. I didn't actually find the cave until day 21, and when I entered it, I realized that it was easily the most populated cave I've had to deal with so far. When I had reached what I assumed was the artifact chamber, there was nothing there, so I decided to just restart my game and see if anything happened. Restarting the game seemed to do the trick and the artifact was there for the taking, so I took it um, while being pursued by this rubble golem and managed to make it out of the cave in one piece. I went back to the wyvern canyon to see if I could get more eggs and then returned home with all of my loot. Things were also really slow on day 22, I just worked on my wall a whole bunch and got a lot of progress done. But then a heat wave started, and a heat wave means phoenix time, so I went out on my wyvern looking for a phoenix, cause I told myself I would not finish this playthrough until I had a phoenix. But they are super rare creatures and I just could not find one anywhere. So that meant no phoenix for a choofy. I ventured back to the world scar on day 23 with a thirst for blood because wild wyverns give you a lot of good experience when they die. I ventured back home and collected a bunch of cactus sap on my Morella tops while listening to screen rants on YouTube. I was bored on day 24, so I went back out on my direwolf to get all the artifacts a second time. But uh, for the first cave, I had to reload the game because uh, it wasn't spawning. But the second cave was fine, since the artifact was already there. But on my way out of the cave, there was this mighty fine specimen of a cave drop, so I decided to check it. And it was not juicy. Not juicy at all. Before I paid another visit to the northern cave, I went back to the wyvern trench so I could get some talents for the griffin tributes. Late in the morning on the next day, I visited the northern cave to go get that artifact. And boy, did I get that artifact. As a matter of fact, I got that artifact so good that uh, not even the rubble golems could stop me. I returned home and finally thought I had what I needed to fight both the Gamma and the Beta Manticore. But uh, then I noticed I didn't actually have enough talents to fight both of them. So I saddled up on one of my wyverns and then headed out to the wyvern canyon where I would spend the rest of the day grabbing as many talents as I could of any kind. Yummy poison egg. Guys, am I going overboard on my wyvern army? Nah. That night, I headed to the green obelisk so I could begin preparations to fight the Gamma Manticore. But then I hesitated and made probably one of the smartest decisions in this entire video. And that was to stop and research before I actually fought the Manticore. And I'm glad I did because apparently the Manticore shoots these poison barbs that inflict torpor on you and your tames. And wyverns don't have that large of a torpor, so they'll get knocked out a lot faster than, say, a T-Rex. Which, from what I gathered from all the forums and stuff I read, it was the preferred beast to take down the monster. So for once, I actually chickened out of something for a good reason. Once I had sunlight back on my side, I decided to go out and search for a decent level rex to begin my army with, and I didn't find one until late into the afternoon, and even then, it was just a decent level. Well, hello. There's two of them. Okay. Better than nothing. Uh, 
Nice. You come here. You come here. No, you don't run. You don't run. You don't run away. Oh, he's running. Oh. A nighttime heat wave meant that if there was a phoenix, it'd be easier to see, so I went for a look while my Brex was taming. Up. <gasps> oh my god! It's him! It's a phoenix! Oh, oh, I wish I had a fire wire. Oh shoot. Oh frick, how am I cold in a heat wave? At the end of the heat wave, though, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I missed out on the exact location of the phoenix's despawn, and I only knew the general location, which was not helpful. But hey, on the bright side, I confirmed that there was indeed a phoenix spawning out there, and on top of that, I knew its general location, so that's something, I guess. The following morning, I found a decent level female to my male rex, so I could immediately begin breeding my rex army, and so I chased after it on foot to knock it out, and if that seems too far-fetched for you, it's not. I just used the surrounding terrain to my advantage. While I waited for the second rex to tame, I leveled up my first rex. Before I started breeding the two, I made sure to level up my female rex so I could have some higher level babies. Oh, twins! Okay! While I waited for the babies to grow, I wanted to know how mutations worked, so I watched this Syntac video on how they worked. And, uh, it was pretty interesting, so I put the link in the description if you're also interested, but, uh, I never actually ended up using it because I'm too impatient. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. My dear boas were acting up on day 28. <laughs> this meant weather. I mean, uh, you wave? Where's my fire wiper? <laughs> place where it was was on the other side of here. I lit it up with my fire wyvern because that's how you tame them, you, you blow fire on them, but my sense of aim was horrible. And before I knew it, the heat wave ended. Oh, no! I failed. I didn't give up though. I tamed the first parasaur I saw and then used it to find the exact location where the phoenix would respawn when the next heat wave started. Once I did, I began building a trap over said spot using a model that I had found on the internet. Once I was satisfied, I left for home on my wyvern and guess what guys, I actually finished my wall. Then later that evening, I realized I had enough resources to craft myself a chemistry bench and used it to make a bunch of flamethrower ammo and spark powder. Nice, I got a flamethrower. That's freaking cool. The next day was more of a resource gathering day, so I headed to the mountain nearest to my base to get as much metal as I could carry before heading back home. But shortly after I got back, a lightning storm started, and those things are wicked. Once the storm passed, I headed over to my oil rigs to find out how much they had collected, and uh, can you, can you tell that I kind of forgot about them? Wow. Day 30, I cryopotted all of my rexes and flew to the mountains so I could level them up. And that by itself is pretty much self-explanatory, because I just kill everything in sight, so there's there's not a lot left to describe there. And yes, I really did cryopod all of my rexes. I, I had like five? Five or six? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I'll be a good dad. Eventually, I made my way out to the dunes where the death worms lurked, and I knew that if I killed a death worm, it would give me a great amount of experience. But uh, the thing is that death worms are also really rare, and uh, yeah, my my luck with rare creatures is so good. It's, it's so good. Remember when I got all excited the previous day about finding a death worm and killing it for experience? Well, I found a death worm, and that was so freaking stressful. Oh, 
I got back home mid-afternoon on my Rexes, but as soon as I did, I immediately turned around and went back out of my Lightning Wyvern so I could level him up as much as I could before the Manticore fight. When I returned home from that, I placed an Industrial Cooker, but then realized it wasn't irrigated, and uh, my configuration was weird, so uh, it wasn't pretty, but it worked. Day 32 was a day of just preparation. I was crafting spark powder, gunpowder, stimulants to keep my wyvern awake during the manticore fight, gasoline, and of course bullets. Well, wait, I, I don't actually think I used any of the bullets in the fight. I spent all this time making guns that I don't even use. Maybe I should just use it as a kitchen gun. Look how it cleans this greasy hob! <laughs> hey, goodbye, dirt! <clears throat> Sorry, I got distracted there. I can't even, they're so cute. I was starting to run out of excuses for things to do to pass the time until a heatwave, so I crafted a bunch of bullets and a ton of health brews. But even then I hit a limit, so I went after a kangaroo and tried to tame it on foot for the thrill of the chase, and obviously it wasn't gonna work, but I was super serious when I said I wasn't gonna go fight and beat the mana core until I had tamed a phoenix. On the morning of day 34, it happened. It almost caught me off guard, too, since I was in the middle of watching a video on Ark Lore. By cunningly taking advantage of this fact, I have managed to completely deceive the deceiver. Begin at the ground. The grim old Vashi travel- Pause the YouTube video. Here you go. Go. Heat wave. I don't think I've ever tamed a more beautiful creature than the phoenix in this game. And granted, I've only played two maps, but I'm serious. I spent a good little amount of time just discovering all the weird and cool things this thing can do. It cooks my meat. But now the time for having fun in games was over. I had achieved my goal in getting a phoenix. And now it was time to fight the gamma and beta mana core. With all my rexes and tributes in tow, I made one final trip to the green obelisk. So there is a saying that goes, there are only three things that are definite in this life. Death, taxes, and Chufi forgetting to record during very important moments in his playthroughs. I went to go get some dinner and pause the recording, and then just forgot to hit play again when I got back. It, it was just that simple. What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. But I guess there was a little bit of karma there as well, since one of my Rexes was knocked out by the Gamma Mana Core. And yeah, I had to wait for him to wake up. Can you wake up, please? Yeah, I'd, I'd apologize, except I'd probably clown myself either way, so I guess it doesn't matter. All right, y'all. Here we go.
Nice. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, wait, there's no cutscene. So, I'm probably not the only one that thinks that Scorched Earth deserves a good cutscene, and since it didn't have one here, I went ahead and made one myself. But before I show you that, as well as another little surprise afterward, I want to say a couple things. First things first, these videos take a lot of time and energy to make, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like and or the subscribe button. It takes like two seconds and it's completely free. But more importantly, it encourages me to keep making content and to push myself to make each video even better than the last. Secondly, I have a Twitter page which I occasionally post updates, so if you don't like being in the dark in between video releases, I suggest giving it a follow. Link is in the description. Okay, now for the homemade cutscene. The exquisite metal this place is made out of. Not to mention that bizarre creature. It reminds me of the material that lines the obelisks. Yet somehow more alive. The very walls of this place seem to hum with power. To possibility. I must find more information on this material.